Good morning and welcome to First Burger. We are so excited to have you here worshiping with us today. Our service today looks a little bit different. This is our family service. So today, all of our children will be staying in the service with us. If you have a child that is birthed through pre-K, we do still have the nursery, but everyone else, we're celebrating God and worshiping God together today. So church family, what that means is today we're going to have a lot of grace for these little ones that are in here learning to sit, learning to listen, and learning to worship. Those of you without children, I want you to think about two things. First of all, I want you to know that there are lots of little sets of eyes in here today that are learning what it means to worship God from you. So every action that you do today, whether you're sitting and listening, whether you're worshiping, we've got kids in here who are looking to you as an example. So we want to show them how to behave in the service. That means grown-ups, you got to behave today. <laughs> that also means that we have families that are trying to make it through a service and keep their kids quiet. And that is a hard thing to do. So first of all, families, we want you to know we don't expect you to be quiet at all times. We have a little bit of grace. Also, if you are sitting near a family and you notice that a kid's getting restless or a kid's really having trouble focusing, you see that mom who is starting to sweat it because she's afraid that everyone's looking at her. We want to be that loving family today. We want to encourage those families with kids in the service. So reach out, be that aunt, that uncle, be that grandma, that grandpa, be that encouraging face today. Encourage that mom, encourage those kids, and let's have a great family service. Well, what does a family service look like? A family service means that we are going to get to start out with not one, not two, but I think three baptisms today. Uh, we also have, I know, isn't that exciting? And whenever we have a baptism, if you're new with us, we believe in celebrating. The Bible tells us that when anyone comes to know Christ, that the angels in heaven celebrate. And so we feel like if the angels in heaven are celebrating, so can we. So we clap, we cheer, we wave our rah-rah sticks, and we have a good time when we do baptisms. We also have some child dedications today, some families who are dedicating to raise their children up to love God. So we are so excited. We are going to be worshiping through song. We're going to be worshiping by listening to Pastor Charlie and by taking communion. If you have a child with you today who you think is going to struggle sitting still, we do have busy bags over here. If there's extras, adults, you're welcome to use those too. So that's what our service looks like. One other thing I ask is if you are new, if you are a guest with us today, there are some connect cards in the pews in front of you. If you will go ahead, grab one of those connect cards, fill it out, let us know that you're here. If there's any way that we can pray for you as a church body, go ahead and fill one of those out. We want to know how we can come alongside you and pray for you. If you'll take those, put them in the offering boxes that are at the entrances to the worship center. If you plan on worshiping through giving of tithes or offering, you can also put your offering there or go online to firstborger.com backslash giving and give your tithes there. Now, you guys have heard a lot from me this morning, but I have one more thing to share. We have my favorite time of year coming up, which is VBS. So we are needing lots of help with VBS still. I need people to hang signs. I need people to cook goodies for my volunteers so that they come back and volunteer next year because the food was so good. And I need people to bring food for snacks for the kids. If you are interested in helping out in one of those three ways, if you'll go to the Connect Desk after church, I'll be over there and I'll help you sign up for those things. So we are going to go ahead and get our service started. If you would, please bow your heads and pray with me. Father God, we come before you today, and we are so thrilled to be able to celebrate as a church family as we do baptisms and baby dedications and just spend time worshiping you. God, thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and to praise you as the one and only God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. In your name we pray, amen. If you would, please direct your attention to the baptistry. Morning. Can this go right there? Here, right there, everybody can see you. This is my friend Brooks Linger. 
Brooks is seven years old. Can you say hi, Brooks? Hi. That works both ways. Absolutely right. Brooks and I had a great conversation this week. And, you know, even though Brooks is seven, he has a firm grasp of what salvation is. And he has a firm grasp of what baptism is and what it isn't. So, Brooks, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Yes. And have you invited Jesus into your heart? Yes. Okay, then turn this way right here. Atta boy. Put your hands like we talked about. Atta boy. Upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's my privilege and pleasure to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the newness of life. This is Tinley Davis. Tinley is eight years old. And we also had a fun conversation about Jesus, about inviting him into her heart, about salvation, about baptism. So, Tinley, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. Y'all say hi to Tinley? Hi. a girl. So, Tinley, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead? Yes. Amen. And have you invited Jesus into your heart? Yes. Okay. Put your hand back to talk about So, Tinley, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's my privilege and pleasure to baptize you, my daughter, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the midst of life. I can get a good look at you, see how good looking you are. This is my friend Mario Davia. Mario is 13 years old, and we also had a conversation about Jesus Christ. And Mario understands what salvation is. He understands what baptism is. So Mario, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead? Yes. And have you invited Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior? Yes. You turn this way right here. Put your hands like we talked about. And Mario, upon your public profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's my privilege and pleasure to baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. Grace to us. Grace to us. Is God good or what? I tell you, I could do this every Sunday, all Sunday long. This is wonderful stuff. So we praise God for it. Join me in a word of prayer if you would. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, God, for the local church, for the body of Christ, Lord. We thank you that men and women are willing to volunteer their time to invest in young people's lives. And God, this is the result. It's a kingdom return when we invest in the lives of young people. They come to know you. They come to understand who you are. And they profess faith in you as their Lord and Savior, God. Father, we thank you so much for Brooks, for Tinley, for Mario, God. And Father, there's plenty of room for more in your kingdom. We give you all the glory, Lord. We worship you. We thank you for your faithfulness and for your goodness. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all the church said, amen. Good morning. Welcome to First Borger today. And thanks so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Here are a few things you need to know, so check it out. This is the first Wednesday of the month, and that means the first Wednesday meal, which begins at 530. Then stay with us as we grow in our relationships with Christ and one another during our midweek activities. June 15th, we'll kick off first fun nights with an ice cream social at Uber Park. Then, June 29th, we will be sitting on the shady side of Hodgetown as we enjoy Sod Poodles baseball. Tickets are $9 each. Sign up as soon as possible as tickets are limited and must be purchased by June 14th. Sign up in Sunday School, Connect Desk, or the church office. We would like to welcome and congratulate our newest committee members.
There are still positions to be filled in personnel, finance, and long-range planning committees. If it is on your heart to serve in these areas or God has gifted you in these areas, we ask that you contact the church office or Pastor Charlie. Tomorrow, May 30th, the church office will be closed in observance of Memorial Day as we celebrate, respect, and honor our fallen heroes. Hey, Tom and Eddie the Skit Guys here inviting you to be a part of VBS. That's right. Vicious Bible Stories. What? Yeah, VBS, Vicious Bible Stories. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, there's vicious stuff in there. Do you know what happened to John the Baptist? I do, but however, we're not talking about that. We are talking about VBS, Vacation Bible School. Oh, um, that's something completely different. Yes. I'm sorry. And what we want to encourage you to do is to make plans and to mark your calendar to be a part of VBS, Vacation Bible School. Hang on, hang on. You keep saying vacation and school at the same time. Those are not the same thing. Well, um, school can be a vacation. Do you listen to the words that come out of your mouth? No. But VBS is fun, like a vacation, and children go to VBS to learn and to get excited about God's Word, kind of like school, thus Vacation Bible School. Okay, well then, then call it like, um, uh, call it uh, fun, inspirational, uh, neato, kind of school. Hmm? F-I-N-K-S. That's right. Finks. Oh. You want us to call it Finks. You want us just to obliterate uh, the acronym BBS and just start a whole new thing called Finks? Hey, kids, this summer, let's be a part of Finks. Who wants to be a part of Finks? What's Finks? Well, it's Finks. It's where we learn about the Bible. Finks. No, I think we'll just stick with Vacation Bible School. So make plans to be a part of Vacation Bible School and watch your kids have a great time as they learn about this amazing God and His fantastic Word. Yeah, I think everyone will love it. Okay, stop it. <laughs> I don't think you're my boss. Cue the title card, please. What is that? Something oh. Finks. All right, it's enough. If you have not already registered for VBS or have signed up to volunteer, we thinks today would be a great day to sign up. You can register with this QR code or online at firstborder.com. To volunteer, sign up at the Connect Desk. Call Tia here at the church or register online at firstborder.com. During VBS, even the snack time emphasizes and supports the message of Christ. We are in need of snacks specific to this year's theme. There is a sign up at the Connect Desk and Sunday School for what we are needing. For more information about what's going on here at First Border, check Facebook, firstborder.com, and grab a calendar at the entrances on your way out today. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you're here. Well, good morning. Well, I'd like to invite you to stand with us. If you hadn't figured out, I think we like to have fun here at First Border. What do you think? We love to celebrate what God is doing. We love to celebrate through baptism. Wasn't that so great? And if you've never seen this, this is something that's been started this year, and it's exciting to see kids getting celebrated or adults being celebrated with baptism that way. Isn't that awesome? So now we're just going to turn our hearts. We're going to worship Jesus, and we're going to praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you to praise God this morning with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength, because he is so worthy of it, isn't he? Standing on the promise of the Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let us praise him. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises they cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living the word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Every moment to the Spirit's call. 
AJ, can you go to the chorus, please? This chorus. We're going to sing this chorus again, but I want to encourage you just to, to turn it in, to make, make it your prayer. We're just going to say, to you, my heart is open. Nothing here is hidden. let your fire fall down. We're just going to make this a prayer and, and I want to encourage you if you're serious about it to, to just open your heart. Just to say, God, I'm open to you this morning. What do you have this morning? Oh, to you my heart is open. Nothing here is here.
cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands is free, my Savior.
God, you're so amazing. We just praise your name this morning, God. The gospel story is just laid out in this song, Lord. And on the third, at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again. Who trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ our King. Lord, we roar for you this morning, God. We praise you this morning, God. And the story doesn't stop there, God, because you sent your spirit to live inside of each and one of us. And so the, the kingdom of heaven is right here in this place today. We thank you for that, God. We love you, God. We ask that you just be with every part of this service today, God. And there's things that we've seen a million times. We've heard a million times. But Holy Spirit, you bring new things to everything. So God, I ask that we just open our eyes this morning to what you have. That we be open to be transformed by the renewing of our minds today. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you could, please, as you're seated, turn your attention to the screen. Dear Dad, after all these years, I've never stopped writing. I still remember many of the letters I've written you and the moments I wish you could have seen. trying real hard to remember that you told me you'll always love me and to write you all the time. I didn't want you to go, but you pulled me close and hugged me tight and you said that some things are worth fighting for. Dear Daddy, I learned how to roller skate today. You'd be so proud. I fell down sometimes and skinned my knees, so I tried again and again. I was brave just like you. Hey, Dad. Sorry I haven't ridden in a while. I'm 14 today. Can you believe it? Don't worry, though. No boyfriends. Mom and I are doing well. Sometimes we get lonely, but it's not too bad. Dear Dad, High school graduation. I really wish you were here today. College is just around the corner. I'm staying close to home, though. I figured you'd want me to help keep an eye on Mom. Dear Dad, today I married the man of my dreams. He reminds me of you. He's gentle yet strong. He loves serving me, and he can make me laugh all the time, just like you could. Granddaddy went ahead and walked me down the aisle, said that you'd be proud of me. It was a wonderful day seeing so many friends. We talked about you a lot and how we wished you were here. Oh, Daddy, I love coming to visit you. This time, I brought someone else, your granddaughter. I tell her about you all the time. We talk about the letters I write you and that maybe she can write you too someday. Yesterday, she told me she'd love to meet you. So I pulled her close, I hugged her tight, and told her about how some things in this world are worth fighting for, even dying for. Love always, your daughter. Memorial Day, so much more than going to the lake, a party, or cook out in the backyard. You know, every year I get choked up when I watch these videos. My dad was a World War II, Korea, Vietnam veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Had he not survived World War II, I wouldn't be here but I am.
Both our sons were Marines. Thank God one was deployed, the other one didn't have to, but survived. It makes you count the cost and it makes you count the blessings that we all have. Some in this room don't have that testimony. Some in this room, in this room lost loved ones. World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the many wars that our country has fought, men have died to preserve our freedom. So let's take just a minute, if we could, put aside all the, the fun and the revelry of high school graduation that took place this past week, as great as that was, and let's just pause and reflect on those that gave their life that we might worship in freedom. Father, your word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So, Father, we thank you that by virtue of divine providence, we are citizens of this great land. But we know that the land is stained by blood. We know that there is American blood on tiny remote islands in the Pacific. Faraway lands in Southeast Asia. Korea, all across the battlefields of Europe, in places we don't know about. Father, we thank you that men and women are willing to devote their lives for their nation and for their fellow man. We thank you, Father, that you were willing to sacrifice your life for us. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we just give you all the glory and honor because you're worthy of it. We thank you for all those that laid down their life and paid the ultimate price for our freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much. It's Memorial Day. Thank you guys for not being at the lake today or the beach or the mountains or any, any place besides here. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Wasn't it great to see three people baptized this morning? Don't we praise God for that? Amen. Thank you, Theron. By the way, Theron picked out that video. We'll have to have a conversation with him after. That was, that was wonderful. Wonderful. Those of you on the live stream, thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. We, we appreciate that. You know, it's such a privilege to baptize, and, and I hope that we never take that for granted. I hope that we never reach a place as followers of Jesus Christ where we just think, Oh, yeah, okay, we're going to have to take a little time in the service for baptism. Now he's going to get us out of here late. Now I'm going to be late getting to the restaurant. I'm not going to get a good table. I'm going to have to wait a while. But honestly, don't you think seeing three children baptized is worth a little late? Amen? Amen? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I, and I love, I love how our, our children's ministry celebrates children being baptized. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, and we'll talk about that more in just a few minutes. But I, but I want to talk about baptism for just a second. And so, boys and girls, those of you that are with us this morning, I want you to read on the screen up here, okay? I want you to read this question, because this question is as much for you as it is for our adults here today. Did you know, boys and girls, that you are as much a part of this church as any adult is? You belong here. This is your church. This is your place. It's not, it's not my church someday when I'm older. It's not my church someday when, like Pastor Charlie, I'm fat and have white hair. It, it's your church right now. This is your church. And God is your God. And Jesus is your Savior. And He died for your sins. And to sit and have a conversation with a 7-year-old and an 8-year-old and a 13-year-old and be able to talk with them about what it means to be born again and what it means to be baptized, I tell you, as a pastor, it just doesn't get any better than that. That's just awesome. And I love how, how we celebrate that. I love the signs. I love the fanfare. I love the streamers because it's a big deal. And like Tia said this morning, and yes, I can hear you from up there, just so you'll know. 
But when, when one lost sheep has been found, all of heaven rejoices. All of heaven rejoices. Can you imagine? Can you picture it? All of heaven rejoices when one of these children accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. All of heaven rejoices when one of these children gets baptized. It's a party in heaven, I'm telling you. It's a good party in heaven, and it ought to be a good party here. We ought to hoop and holler. We ought to have streamers and signs. We ought to stand up and clap and applaud because it's a big deal because those children have been born again. They have a Savior in Jesus Christ. And as a parent, as a grandparent, you don't have to worry about their eternity anymore because it's been nailed down. Their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So boys and girls, I have a question for you. Why is being baptized important? Why is it an expectation in the church for believers in Jesus? Why do we do that? Why do we want to talk to you? Why does mommy and daddy want to talk to you about being baptized? So we're going to talk about this morning. Let's look at Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. And I'm going to read it, and it's going to be in the screen behind me. So if you have your Bibles, turn there. If you don't, you can read it on the screen. And this is as much for, for our children and our students as it is for any adult in this room. Because it never hurts to go back to the fundamentals and to the basics. It says, Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan... Galilee is the northern region in Israel, and the Jordan is the river that runs from the Sea of Galilee, and it runs all the way down into the Dead Sea. Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, so he's at the river, coming to John to be baptized by him. In verse 14, But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? It's because John recognized who Jesus was. This is before Jesus' ministry. This is before he did any miracles. But John knew who Jesus was because God had sent John to tell the world about Jesus, to be prepared, to, to make ready, to make way. In verse 15, But Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he permitted him. So let's stop right there. See, I have that in italics. That's those, those funny squiggly letters that you see up there. It's fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Now, boys and girls, you weren't in here when I talked about righteousness a few weeks ago. But righteousness is, is, is the standard that God wants us to meet. It's meeting his standard. It's when we become followers of Jesus Christ. You see, we want to be a follower of Jesus before we get baptized. You can't be baptized until you have become righteous in Him, until you've met that standard. So baptism doesn't save you. Baptism is, is your public declaration or your public profession of faith in Jesus. It's you saying, you know what? My heart belongs to Jesus. I've given my heart to Jesus. Tinley gave her heart to Jesus. And so she stood up there this morning. Brave little girl, don't you think? along with the rest of them, Brooks and, and Mario, stood up there and said, you know what, I, my heart belongs to Jesus. It fulfills all righteousness. It means that we've met God's standard when we're born again. Because now he sees us, and, and he, doesn't see, he doesn't see all the bad things that Pastor Charlie did when he was little. He doesn't see all the disobedient things Pastor Charlie sees. He looks at Pastor Charlie, and he sees the image of his son Jesus in me. Boys and girls, did you know that God sees the image of His Son in you when you know Jesus as your Savior? Isn't that amazing? I don't know how that happens, but it does once you've invited Jesus Christ as your, into your heart. And baptism is your public profession of faith. So it means that you've met God's standard. But that it means more than that. Look at verse 16. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. He came up immediately from the water. Now, I know some of you wonder, is Pastor Charlie going to hold me under the water a long time? And I'm not. I may hold Wally under the water a long time, but, but nobody else. He came up immediately out of the water. John baptized Jesus. He went under the water, and he came back, back out of the water immediately. And behold, the heavens were opened, 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. Jesus came up out of the water as John baptized him, and the heavens opened up. Can you imagine? I would have loved to have seen that. And the Spirit of God came down. And it's like a dove landed on his shoulder. Can you, can you kind of picture that? I can picture that. I think that's the coolest thing. And then verse 17, And behold, a voice out of the heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Notice I wrote that in those funny squiggly letters again, those italics. Boys and girls, when Jesus was baptized, not only did he meet God's standard, but it also pleased God. Don't you, boys and girls, don't you like it when you do something that makes your mom and dad smile? Makes grandma and grandpa smile? Puts a smile on their face? See, we all want to please our, our parents, right? And so when Jesus got baptized, it pleased God. And God loved him so much, he said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. When Tinley got baptized this morning, God said, this is my beloved daughter whom I'm well pleased. When Mario got baptized and Brooks got baptized this morning, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. See, that's why we get baptized. So why do we baptize? It meets God's standard and it pleases God. We don't get baptized because it's a Baptist church and that's what Baptists do. It is a Baptist church and it is what Baptists do, but we do it because it's what the Bible said. It's because Jesus gave us that example. So that's why we get baptized. And we do some other funny things as a church. Well, they're not really funny, but they're just different. We're some things that maybe some other churches don't do. And one of those is, is child dedications. Child dedications. And we're going to have a couple of those this morning. But before we do, I want to ask another question. Boys and girls, I want you to consider this question along with your moms and dads and other people that are here. Why does our church ask parents to dedicate their children? Why do we do that? Is it just so that you can come up here and I can, I can mess with you and, and make fun of you? No. We do it for a very important reason, and we're going to talk about that this morning. So I'm going to invite the Linger family to come up here. I'm going to invite the Richter family to come up here right now. This is Bo Wilson Linger. You can see Bo's picture there. He was born January 28th of this year. Yeah, you guys go ahead and come. Everybody come up. And this is August Augie. I asked for permission. This is Augie Owen Richter. October 29th, 2021. Yep, all, I'm sorry. All the family. Near family, far family, wannabe family, used to be family. If you're family in any way, shape, or form, I want you guys to come up here. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to come all the way up here, okay? We're going we're gonna to make you guys really pretty. Y'all just stand up right across here. Everybody, is this a good-looking group or what? Don't we praise God for that? <laughs> Absolutely right. So you can see Augie's picture there. Jake, can you go back? Just make, make sure everybody gets a good look at Bo. Bo Wilson Linger, I love that. January 28th, and then Augie. Is it okay for me to call him Augie? Sweet. August, Augie, Owen Richter, October 29th. So it's precious. It's just precious that we have this time together. So, guys, we, we've done this several times, and so you know what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to stand up here in front of these guys and, and ask them some questions and talk to them. And, boys and girls, some of you have been up here in the past when we've done this, and some of you, that may be in your future. But, but we're going to answer the question, well, why do we do that? And so as we go along through this, I want, I want you to participate in paying attention as to why we do this. And the moms and dads and family that have gathered, they're going to do the same thing, okay? Okay, so y'all excuse me. Those of you on FaceTime, please excuse me. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn my back to them because really they're the focus of what we're doing right now, these children. So the question was, why does our church ask parents to dedicate their children? In Mark chapter 10, Verses 13 and 14. By the way, this is Brian and Sarah Richter, my bad. And this is Katie and Cameron Linger and the rest of the family. So in case you didn't know who they were, now you do. In Mark chapter 10, verses 13 and 14, this is in the New American Standard. It says, And they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them. 
But the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them. And notice I wrote that in those squiggly, funny letters again, boys and girls. Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them. Hi, Margot. The one thing I love about Margot, she says hi to me every week. That just blesses me. Permit the children to come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. The kingdom of God belongs to children. Did you know that? The kingdom of God belongs to children. That's a big deal. Now in the message, Eugene Peterson writes it this way. He says, but Jesus was irate, and he let them know it. He said, don't push these children away. Don't ever get between them and me. That's a big deal. Don't ever get between them and me. Parents, grandparents, family members, don't ever get between God and these children and what he has planned for them. These children are at the very center of life in God's kingdom. Child dedication is the public declaration by parents and family that they will never do anything, never do anything, Let those words just kind of hang in the air for a second. Never do anything to come between Jesus and their child. Barner Research says 43% of all Americans who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior do so before age 13. 64%, two out of three, make that commitment to Christ before their 18th birthday. It's why it's such a big deal church when our children accept Christ as their Lord and Savior and get baptized because the likelihood is if they don't do it while they're still living with you they won't it's also why it's incumbent upon you and incumbent upon you to make sure they know who Jesus Christ is did you know that among Christians who came to Christ before age 13 I think all the children on the platform are younger than the age of 13. 50% were led to Christ by their parents. And another 20% were led by another relative or close family friend. If my math serves me correctly, that's 70% of people that accepted Christ before 13 did so because their parent, their grandparent, or a close family friend Share Jesus with them. It's why it's so important that you volunteer for VBS. It's why it's so important that you volunteer for camp. It's why it's so important that we invest in these kids. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no such thing as spiritual retirement. You have something to offer these children. You have something to offer these families. And we have to be about that. So that the Word of God is heard by them and they have a chance to respond to the Holy Spirit. So there's two main conclusions we draw from that. One is that the older a child gets, the less likely they are to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the second one is this. Parents and family members are the most important people in the life of a child and in that child's decision to follow Christ. She wants to come help me. (laughs) And I think she could. Isn't she precious? I just... That's great. So it's why we're here this morning. It's absolutely why we're here this morning. So again, we have Cameron and Katie Linger. He's rock solid out, isn't he? I'll try not to wake him. (laughs) Sarah and Brian Richter. August Owen. He's not. He heard his name. (laughs) He's excited to be here. And Bo Wilson. Good stuff. I am talking about him. That's right. So we're here this morning because both the Lingers and the Richters recognized the importance and the centrality of Jesus Christ in the lives of both Bo and August. Both families have come here this morning accompanied by friends and other family members because they want you to know they're committed to raising Bo and August up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Both families are here this morning to ask you to come alongside them to pray for them, and to pray for Bo and August. Did you hear that? I know my back was turned to you, so I want to make sure you heard that. They're here to morning, this morning asking you to pray for them as they raise their children. It's important that we do that. 
Sometimes it seems kind of lonely, doesn't it? Three o'clock in the morning. I remember those days. <laughs> okay. My wife just said, no, you don't. You were sleeping. <laughs> so, <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. They're here this morning to publicly, de- publicly dedicate both Bo and August to the Lord Jesus Christ. So parents, I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and we're going to do it one at a time, because I, w- I want you to actually respond, not in unison, but, but together, and then your families respond in kind. So if it be your intention to present your child to the Lord and to pledge yourselves to bring Bo and August up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, when the question comes, please answer, we do. So you ready? Okay, we'll start with Bo. Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5. It says, Don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb is generous legacy. Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are your parents with your quivers full of them. Cameron and Katie and family, do you recognize Bo as a precious gift from God? and give genuine thanks to God for this blessing. One more time. Because try it again. All right. Well, I just want to make sure everybody knows. Okay. Brian and Sarah, do you recognize August as a precious gift from God and give genuine thanks to God for this blessing? Okay. This is all very interactive. It's very important. So let's try one more time. Do you recognize August as a precious gift from God and give genuine thanks to God for this blessing? We do. (laughs) (laughs) Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Cameron and Katie and family, do you pledge as parents that you will bring Bo up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? Yes. Excellent. Brian and Sarah and family, do you pledge as parents that you will bring August up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? First John chapter 4, verse 4, and this again is in the message. It says, my dear children, you come from God and belong to God. Think about that just for a second. Church, think about that. My dear children, you come from God and belong to God. Cameron and Katie and family, do you understand that your role in Bo's life is that of a steward to the Lord? Do you pledge to provide for Bo's physical, mental, and spiritual needs? Brian and Sarah and family, do you understand that your role in August's life is that of a steward to the Lord? Do you pledge to provide for August's physical, mental, and spiritual needs? So here's the final charge, and this is the tough one. So think about this before you answer. Cameron and Katie, family, do you here this day surrender all of Bo's future to the Lord and commit to cooperate with God and submit to His perfect plan for His life? We do. Think, nope. Jason, I said, think about it first. <laughs> Do you hear this day surrender all Bo's future? To the Lord and commit to cooperate with God and submit to his perfect plan for his life. You may have plans for him to be the president of the United States or an engineer or a doctor or whatever it is he had planned for. And he may come home one day and said, you know, I know we've talked my whole life about me doing this or that. And I feel like God's calling me to do this. Are you willing to step back and step out of the way and say, you know, God, not my will, but yours be done? That's really the question that we're asking. If you do, say we do. do. Same thing for you, Sarah Sarah and Brian. And you guys have done this before. Do you hear this day surrender of all of August's future to the Lord and commit to cooperate with God and submit to his perfect plan for his life? So let's pray. 
And church, I'd ask you to pray as well. In fact, I would ask you to just stick your hands out, if you're comfortable with that, just stick your hands out towards this couple as we pray for them. Father, we thank you for these precious children, for Bo and for August, for Cameron and Katie, for Brian and Sarah, and for their, their families, Lord. We thank you for their willingness to, to commit to, to you, their child, on this, this day, Lord. We thank you for their willingness to stand before the church and say, hey, we, we want you to pray for us. We, we need your help. We need your encouragement. We need your prayers as we do the best we can to raise our boys up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Father, as a church, we take seriously this moment, this opportunity to join these two families in dedicating these precious boys to you. We give you all the glory, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay right there. Have a couple of things for you. Thank you. This is for Bo. And this is for August. He is so good. They're both good. Of course, he's asleep. So my mom used to say, yeah, Charles is a pretty good boy, especially when he's asleep. Inside those envelopes is a letter from me to them, and it's dated today. But on the outside of that envelope, it says, do not open this envelope until the day of your salvation. So the day that these boys accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're going to receive a letter from me. And it talks to them about what it is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And that their parents dedicated them years ago, and now they've seen that come to fruition. Amen? I mean, let's give these folks a hand, shall we? Thank you guys so much. You're welcome to come on down. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping me, Margo. <laughs> oh, goodness. She's such a blessing. So why do we dedicate children? Boys and girls, I want you to pay attention now. So why do we dedicate children? Child dedications are a family's public declaration that, number one, they will do nothing to come between their child and God. They will do nothing to come between their child and God. Number two, they recognize their child as a gift from God. A gift from God. Boys and girls, did you know that you're a gift from God to your parents? You're a gift to God, to your grandparents. It's a big deal that you were born. Because God gave your parents and your grandparents a wonderful gift. You. Child dedications are a family's public declaration that they will raise their child to know God and walk in obedience to God. It's a big deal. Take seriously their role as parents. And this maybe is the most important one. They understand their responsibility to God as stewards of His child. You see, boys and girls, God gave you as a gift to your parents. And He told your parents, I'm going to give you this child for a while. But the child came from me, and one day, if you do your job well, your child's going to return to me. See, your parents have a very important job. They are stewards of your life. Stewards on behalf of God. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And on Celebration Sundays, we also celebrate the Lord's Supper. You may have grown up in a faith tradition where it was referred to as communion, the Eucharist, but the question is, why do we observe the Lord's Supper? Why do we do that? And so we're going to look at that this morning. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 26, and then after I'm done with that, I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward, and we're going to, we're going to serve you the Lord's Supper. But since we're in the book of Matthew right now, I want to share with you the Lord's Supper from Matthew's 
perspective that he's recorded in his gospel. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 29. says, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. And then he said, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So at this time, I'd like for our deacons to come forward. Gentlemen, those are, that are going to help this morning. Spanky come and serve you guys. While he's doing that, I'm going to direct your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is Paul's account of the Last Supper, the observance of the Last Supper that Jesus gave him. So beginning in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 28, Paul writes, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Notice, boys and girls, those squiggly lines. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. Again, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And the deacons are going to come and they're going to serve you. So gentlemen, you guys go ahead. So some of the questions that come up, all right, well, who can participate? Anyone who has trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, regardless of church membership. You do not have to be a member of First Baptist Church to participate in the Lord's Supper. You do have to be a member of the kingdom of God. You do have to be born again and saved to participate in the Lord's Supper. It's usually one of the, the big things for parents is, answering questions for their children. Why can't I take the Lord's Supper? And it's something that's reserved for followers of Jesus Christ. When you get it, I'm going to ask you to just hold on to it for now. I know it takes a little time to get all the plastic stuff off. You, you'll, you'll be happy to know that, that when we do this the next time, it will go back to be the way that it used to be.
in verses 27 and 28 as we're still getting the elements of some of the some of the folks Paul writes therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the lamb but a man must examine himself and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup so I would just ask you to take just a minute ponder the bread and the cup ponder your relationship with Jesus Christ is there anything in your life that you need to get right with God before you partake in the Lord's Supper any business you need to do with the Lord anything the Holy Spirit's directing you to do let's just take a minute and allow you an opportunity to do just that While y'all do that, gentlemen, you guys can go ahead and come forward. Go join your families. So if you would, take the bread in your hand. Paul writes, For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night of which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you would, take your cup. Paul writes, in the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So why, why do we observe the Lord's Supper? Well, it's a reminder of Jesus' life and his death. Jesus said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. We, we remember his life. We remember the life that he led and culminating in his death. So each time we partake of the bread and partake of the cup, we're reminded of Jesus' body that was broken and his blood that was shed and the new covenant that was inaugurated by his life and death. And it symbolizes the new covenant. Covenant of grace. Boys and girls, aren't you glad to know that you don't have to earn Jesus' love? That He just gives it to you. He loves you so much. It's also a proclamation of Jesus' return. You see, he, he, he promised that He wouldn't eat or drink it again until after His return. One day, boys and girls, Jesus is going to return. And we're going to sit down at what they call the wedding feast of the Lamb. And I believe Jesus is going to take bread and he's going to break it. And he's going to pass it to all of us. And I believe he's going to take the cup. And we're all going to partake. Can you imagine celebrating the Lord's service, Lord's Supper with Jesus? 
I know. It'll be unbelievable. And it's also a time of self-examination for each of us. That we pause. And we consider the work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That we consider the work of the cross. And the blessings that flow down, mixed with His blood from that cross, that flow to all of us. The forgiveness of our sins, the gift of eternal life, the gift of the Holy Spirit within us to lead and guide us. It's the most important moment in all of history. The death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to gather in obedience to your word to do this in remembrance of you. Father, we remember your body that was broken. We remember the events of the cross. We we remember your blood that was shed. And Father, we say thank you so much that you were willing to knowingly and willingly and obediently go to the cross to suffer the indignity of crucifixion. That you were willing to humble yourself and die for all of our sins. God, we thank you so much, and we love you so much, and we look forward to the day that you return and that we sit down at that great table and partake again in your presence. We love you, Lord Jesus, and it's your name we pray. Amen. Just a reminder, as you exit today, any time that we participate in the Lord's Supper, we have a benevolence offering at the door. So as you make your way out, if you would, just contribute to that. You know, we have a lot of people in our community that are less fortunate than us. Many people in our own church family that may be less fortunate than us. So we make sure that we have the resources to help them meet their needs. So before we're dismissed, though, I would ask you that you direct your attention to the screen for just a few moments. My name is Corey Ebersberger, and um, I went through Torch, and it changed my life. Somewhere along the line, my dad just started becoming a heavy drinker. And um, in that drinking, it kind of pushed me to the streets at a young age. So it wasn't long after living up in Ohio, I started getting into trouble. Um, which led me to ODUIS, uh, the Ohio Department for Youth Services. I was fighting and just young and, and just wild. And so when I got out of there, I didn't really learn much. I started getting back into trouble. I, I went right back to everyone that I knew, which led me to prison. But this time, I had a son. Uh, his name is Gage. What was ironic about that is, I was still a little kid myself. (laughs) And it was one day, my brother Preston Blankenship pulled me aside and uh, started talking to me a little bit. And I was looking for a TV. He must have overheard me saying that I was looking for a TV. And uh, he said, hey, uh, do you want my TV? I just asked him, why, like, why, would you give, why would you just give me your TV? And he said he was going home soon and that someone blessed him with it and that he wanted to bless me with it. And he asked me if I wanted to be a part of a program. And uh, he called it the Torch Program. In my mind, I was thinking, no way. I wasn't trying to look soft or, or weak or anything, my perception on what Christianity was. And then he told me um, that they had good food. The first day I came, I came for the food and I experienced um, something that superpassed um, the hunger that I had in my belly. And I knew what I had to do. I was a part of the gang. And the only way to get out of the gang, to fully follow Christ with all my heart, was I had to get blood out. I went out on the yard in the prison, and I got stomped out. 
for Christ. The beating that I took could not even compare to the beating that Christ took for us. After going through the torch weekend, um, to say that it changed my life just wouldn't be enough. All I want to do is be a blessing. I want to be a light for Christ and his kingdom. Next weekend at uh, the High Plains Juvenile Detention Center, 27 kids, ages range 13 to 18, male and female, all of them have been pretty much abused and neglected. They're going to have a Kairos weekend, a torch weekend, where a team of us will go inside and spend the whole weekend with them, and they'll be hearing about Jesus for the first time. Um, we'd like to give you the opportunity to just participate in this ministry by signing up for the prayer chain, which is going to be an actual physical chain made of strips of paper that you're going to sign, and it's going to stretch its way around the gym. And if you need an excuse to go down to Amarillo next Sunday afternoon to see how these kids have been changed by the weekend, it's called the closing. If you want to do that, i got a card that will give you instructions on how to uh, get signed up for it. All you need to do is your driver's license and show up around 2 on Sunday. I'll give you the directions if you send me your email. Anyway, thank you for your participation. Jane's going to be at the back exit with two of these clipboards. I'll be up here at the front. It's a quick signature and just saying, yeah, I'm going to pray for these guys Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, thank you all for coming. It's been a great day. You know, I was reading the scripture, Hebrews 10 and 24. It says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Today, I think we've done just that. We've gathered together in this room. We've uh, encouraged one another. We, we've watched people get baptized. We've we're, we're part of baby dedications, committing to pray for these families. We participate in the Lord's Supper. And then we get to participate in prayer for a group of kids that are going through a, a, the roughest time in their life right now. And we get to help lift up and encourage and hopefully see testimonies like we just saw there. So as you leave this morning, I just want to encourage you, remember the benevolence offering. But as you stand up, there's a lot of people in this room. I want to encourage you to take a minute just to hug some necks, shake some hands and lift up one another as you leave today. So once again, thank y'all so much for coming. Thank you for, uh, for being a part of us today. Y'all have a wonderful week, and we'll see you.